Apple has finally updated the iPad Pro, their high-stand iPad, which hasn't really seen an update since 2018. So without any further ado, here's my quick unboxing, but mostly my first impressions with Apple's high-stand iPad for 2020, or at least for now. So yeah, get those snacks and drinks and that hand sanitizer ready and everything you need. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. If you have an iPad Pro or any iPad whatsoever that supports the Apple Pencil, you have to check out Paperlike, our sponsor, for this video. Paperlike is essentially a thin screen protector that you apply to the iPad. That simply makes the iPad's display feel more like real paper as opposed to that slippery glass feel that you normally get when using the Apple Pencil. So, if you're an artist or anyone that uses an Apple Pencil, Paperlike is a must-have. It's pretty much a game-changer. Oh, and whenever you buy one Paperlike, you actually get two of them. And on top of this, you also get 100% money-back guarantee in case you are not satisfied. Simply use the link below for a 10% discount or the coupon code ZOT14. Okay, so Apple released the big iPad Pro 3rd generation back in October 2018. And this was pretty much the biggest change that the iPad got ever since the original iPad was launched back in 2010. The home button finally went away, we got Face ID, on-screen gestures, so essentially this iPad was the iPad equivalent to the iPhone X. It was that big of a change, the next generation iPad really. Now, Apple has usually updated their iPad lineup every single year, but for some reason we didn't get the new iPad Pro in 2019. And this was quite strange, because you see, we even got an iPad Pro 4 generation mock-up from my friend Sonny Dixon, and we did a full video on this back in September 2019. So it featured a larger triple lens camera module and no other visual changes apart from that. And fast forward six months and we finally got the iPad Pro. So let's take a look at the box. Uh, we get a very similar style on the front with just the screen of the iPad like we did with the 2018 model. They did change the wallpaper this time, although I actually preferred the way the previous box looked as it made the iPad's bezels look much thinner since the wallpaper was black. Yeah, they do look quite thick in this one. On the top and bottom we get an Apple logo which matches the color of the iPad that's inside, so in this case space grey, and uh, the sides, on the sides we get iPad Pro branding which again also match the color of the iPad. On the back we get a listing of everything that's inside plus the capacity, which in this case is 128 gigabytes, as well as the fact that this is the second generation iPad Pro 11 inch. Yeah, for some reason, Apple isn't calling this the fourth generation iPad Pro, even though they were calling the previous ones iPad Pro third, second, and first generation. But yeah, anyway, opening up the box and we get the iPad itself. We then get a booklet which contains the Apple stickers, which don't seem to match the color of the iPad. Apple's honestly so inconsistent with these stickers. Not all of their products have them, for example the Apple Watch doesn't, and some of them do match the color of the device, some of them don't. So for example, if you get a MacBook Air, you would actually get color matching stickers. If you get a Mac Pro, you would get uh, space gray ones. Uh, but if you buy a MacBook Pro, well, they're all white. Same for the iPad Pro, same for the iPhone. So why? I don't know. Why Tim? Doesn't make any sense. Aside from this, we get a warranty and a safety guide, as well as the quick start guide, which includes some tips on how to navigate the iPad, button placement, and so on. Aside from this, we get a USB Type-C to USB Type-C cable, because yes, the iPad Pro, unlike the iPhones, they do have a USB Type-C port, just like the MacBooks. And we also get a fast charger, which is actually the same 18 watt USB-C charger that we get with the iPhone 11 Pros. What I really like about this charger is just how compact it is. So the UK plug at least comes with these uh, collapsible feet, which makes it perfect for traveling, so yeah, really good job Apple. That's pretty much all we get inside the box, so yeah, quite a straightforward experience. So now, here is everything you need to know about this new iPad. Design-wise, it looks pretty much identical to the 2018 model. So we have the same bezel sizes, the same color options, the exact same thickness, the same everything aside from two things. The first one being the weight. The 2018 11-inch iPad Pro was 468 grams, while the new one is 471. The Wi-Fi and solar model is a bit heavier than that at 473, so yeah, definitely not something that you'll be able to tell, but it's there. And then the second visual difference is the camera module. We now get a much larger surface area compared to before, which now houses a second camera module. These modules are very similar to the cameras that we get on the iPhone 11, not the 11 Pros, 
with the iPhone 11. So, the main module is basically identical, while the second module is an ultra-wide angle module. However, unlike the iPhone 11 and the iPhone 11 Pros, both of which have a 12 megapixel, 120 degree field of view module, the iPad Pro 2020 has a 10 megapixel, 125 degree field of view module. So a bit lower res, but with a higher field of view. We also get a brighter true tone flash, but that's pretty much it. This whole module itself is actually smaller than on the iPhone 11 Pro, but it is a bit bigger than the mock-up that we showed you in September 2019. Now, on that mock-up, we had three camera modules, whereas here, we have two. Well, kinda. There's actually a third module, which is almost invisible, uh, and it's this black circle here, and this is what it's called a time-of-flight or TOF camera. Apple is calling this a LiDAR sensor, but it's essentially the exact same thing. This sensor emits laser beams, which get bounced around the environment, and then they get picked up again by the sensor. And then, based on the time it takes for the beams to get reflected back, and the angle at which they get reflected, the iPad can essentially create a 3D map of the environment. The Face ID camera on the iPhone X and newer, uh, and even the Face ID camera on the 2018 and 2020 iPad Pro already has this functionality, it's just that now we have it on the back as well. So you might be wondering, why do we have it on the back? Well, it's not for scanning faces, but it's for scanning and mapping the environment in 3D. And the biggest difference between this and Face ID is that unlike Face ID, which works at about 30 to 40 centimeters max, the LiDAR module on the back of the iPad works at up to 5 meters, which is a gigantic difference. This is how it can map the environment in 3D so accurately, and Apple even went as far as calling this the best device for AR in the world. Now, unfortunately, there aren't that many AR apps in the first place, and even the ones that we do have, they do not yet take full advantage of this iPad um, and the camera module, the LiDAR sensor. They actually need to use ARKit 3.5, which just got launched, uh, to take full advantage of this LiDAR sensor. Until then, we still get improved object tracking and apps such as IKEA Place, but when it comes to object and people occlusion, that would require an update. At the moment, the only place where the LiDAR sensor is fully utilized is in Apple's very own Measure app. Now, when you measure something, not only will it instantly allow you to measure an object without having to calibrate the app first, like you have to do on the iPhones, but a circle that you use to measure will actually follow an object's shape. So, if you have a table or a wall, uh, it would automatically detect those and sit flat on that surface. Whereas, like I said, on the iPhone, that circle would actually go through the objects because it would not be able to detect them. Yeah, definitely stay tuned for my full in-depth review on this iPad a few weeks from now, after I get to spend more time with it, and hopefully by then, we'll also get some updated apps and hopefully some more AR apps in the App Store that fully make or take use of this new sensor. Now, aside from the weight and the new camera, something else that's different on this new iPad is the processor and the RAM. So, in terms of the RAM, we now get 6GB of RAM all across the board, because before, we had 4GB on all the models except for the 1TB of storage model, which actually came with 6GB of RAM. Now, personally, I've never had any RAM management issues with my 2018 iPad Pro, which, again, had 4GB of RAM, uh, but then my iPhone 11 Pro, which also has 4GB of RAM, that was really, really bad in terms of RAM management. So, really interesting, not sure why that is. Seems like the iPad is a bit more optimized for whatever reason. Uh, but yeah, 6 gigabytes of RAM should make this iPad just a bit more future-proof when compared to the 2018 model. CPU-wise, we get the brand new Apple A12 Z processor. Now, this is interesting because you see, this is the first time since 2010 when Apple launched their A-series processor with the A4 uh, in the iPhone 4. Uh, this is the first time when they've actually added a new name into the mix. So iPads, they've had the A8X, the A9X, the A10X, and the A12X, X being a more powerful version of the regular CPU models that we get inside the iPhones. Long story short, the only difference between the A12X, which is what we got in the 2018 iPad Pro, and the A12Z is that the Z has 8 GPU cores, while the X from 2018 has 7 GPU cores. Fun fact, the A12X was also manufactured with 8 cores, but had one of the cores disabled. But this is actually normal, this is how CPU manufacturing works. So only about 60% of the CPUs manufactured are even usable. And from the 60% batch, very very few have all the cores working perfectly. So the ones that have issues get rebranded into different processors, with some of the cores being disabled. And the same thing applies to GPUs, not just CPUs. So for example, if you buy an RTX 2060, 
that's actually a 2080 that had a few manufacturing issues and they disabled some of the uh, compute units, fun fact. So it seems to me that Apple is just using the exact same Apple A12X CPU, but they're just using a higher quality version of it that has all the cores working perfectly. Aside from this, we also get the improved microphones. Apple's calling these studio quality microphones, like on the 16-inch MacBook Pro, obviously they're nowhere near as good. We get Wi-Fi 6, but aside from this, this is pretty much the exact same iPad as the 2018 model. One thing that we do indeed get, which is actually a pretty nice one to have, is a higher base storage. So we go from 64 gigabytes up to 128 gigabytes for the exact same price, which is quite nice because 128 gigabytes is good enough for most people. 64 was definitely not the case, especially when you're considering that Apple's calling this a pro device. And then probably the biggest upgrade by far is the new Magic Keyboard, which you have to buy separately, uh, but it actually gives you a very similar typing experience to the 16-inch MacBook Pro. And it also comes with a trackpad, which is now fully supported in iPadOS. But you see, this keyboard costs $300 or £300 in the UK, so it's crazy expensive. And for the price of this keyboard plus an iPad Pro, you actually end up spending more than for a MacBook Air, which I would say is just so much more worth it since you get full macOS, which is still far superior to iPadOS in terms of what you can do with it. Also, this keyboard does indeed work on the previous model as well, which is great. And if you have an older iPad Pro or a non-pro iPad, Logitech actually released some brand new keyboards for those iPads, which also have a trackpad so you're not really missing out on anything here. Like really, I would say that the best thing about this iPad is that it actually made the 2018 model cheaper. You can find it at some great prices online, I even left some affiliate links below with some great deals on the iPad in the description box down below. Now, there is said to be a second iPad Pro coming out in November or so. This one is set to feature the brand new Apple A14X processor, which will be based on a 5 nanometer process, so yeah, this one should give us some major performance improvements. And we've even seen reports that Apple will be including a mini LED display into this iPad, or at least the high-end 12.9-inch model, which will give us very similar black levels to an OLED display. Uh, fun fact, mini LED is what Apple's using on their Apple Pro Display XDR, uh, and on that one we have 576 dimming zones, but on the iPad Pro, this one is said to have thousands. So I'm really looking forward to that. But yeah, let me know in the comments what do you guys think about this brand new 2020 iPad Pro. Um, and yeah, if you want to see more videos like this one, definitely subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you get notified whenever a new cool video comes out. Do consider becoming a member if you want to support the channel and everything that we do here at Zone of Tech. But yeah, this has been pretty much it for this one. So thank you for watching. I'm Daniel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zone of Tech. See you.